So as I said, the tent wasn't pitched great. But you don't need it pitched great when you have views like this. Well, now we've got some other problems to deal with. And there he is. Trees is all messed up. Oh, he's got the trusty leatherman, huh? Ouch. Pulled out a bunch of my hair, but got him too. Right there. So from here, you, I think uh, Ben Nevis might be actually hidden by this big old mountain there. But to the right here, we have this big hill with the aerial on top of it. That's where we, that's Cow's Hill viewpoint where we did the camp overlooking Fort William, see Ben Nevis. So let's talk about Ben Nevis because it's appeared in almost every single video that we've made since we've been out here. I haven't mentioned it, but I remember as I was making my way up to the summit. It's just a boulder field, boulders everywhere. And there was only one thing that I was thinking about, one event one person and that was that Aaron Ralston 127 hours the dude who got his, his arm stuck under a boulder and had to cut his arm off um, you know some of those boulders are loose some of them won't move an inch but I was thinking if I got my foot stuck my arm stuck um, you wouldn't last too long being up there in those conditions of course I have my trusty Leatherman but uh, my hands were freezing that was the other thing my hands were freezing uh, and just trying to undo my waist belt and my chest straps and all that painful and so hard to do because I just they just didn't have that uh, that strength that they had previously when, when they're not freezing but uh, so that was the one event like pretty daunting experience and uh, I remember the following day making my way down, I stopped and I looked and I watched the mountain for about an hour and uh, with a coffee and I'm thinking, hey, we did it. Just walking alongside the old 60 mile stretch Caledonian canal and in the background there we have the Banner V swing bridge and Neptune staircase so around 200 years ago this canal was built that, that's some impressive longevity Located just outside of Fort William on the stony banks of the meeting of two locks, Loch Isle and Loch Linnae, lies the rusting remains of MB Dayspring, a 26 meter long fishing boat previously used to catch herring and mackerel in the North Sea. Discovered by the residents of Kewl in December 2011 after a stormy winter's night. MB Dayspring, otherwise known as the Old Boat of Kewl, like many Scottish fables, has an origin tale that takes place on a dark and stormy night. According to the reports, the MB Dayspring broke loose from its mooring during a fierce storm, and the Coast Guard helped control the landing of the vessel on this beach between Core Park and Kewl. Now, Kewl Park, romantically enough, is reputedly based on the Gaelic field of corpses, so called as it was used as a resting place for chieftains on their way for burial at Iona. 
Interestingly enough, the MV Spring isn't the only vessel's remains that lies on this stony beach. Just down the way, you can see it from the MV Spring is a little sailing boat named Argo. That's where the chopper's going. <sighs> nah. We are back at the campsite from last night, the old Dundeerdale Trail campsite. Um, I, I really just went into town got a few supplies for tonight and came back because I liked it that much that I figured, wait, you know, let's just spend another night here. And we picked up ourselves another friend along the way. Ouch. I'm currently fixing to do the old Van Gogh Radiotrum Thermo Platinum Roll Mat Review um, and, and get that out tomorrow. Uh, because tomorrow I'm planning to be at the Glen Nevis campsite, use their Wi-Fi, use their showers, their washing machines and tumble dryers uh, because yeah, we, it, it needs to be done again. So that's the plan for right now. The airfield welded. The airfield welded channels caught. It's a cold one this morning. Didn't want to get out the sleeping bag. Three degrees Celsius here in Glen Nevis this morning. Uh, waiting for the sun to rise over the mountains and get some light in here. I'm beginning to develop a little bit of a chest infection, um, which is good. But it's going to get warmer today. A good 25 degrees it's going to get today, so uh, that will be nice. That's what's needed. So we have reached our destination for the night. Uh, it's not the original destination for the night. We were going to go to our Stow Falls and uh, the second highest waterfall in the UK, do a little camp out there. But as I was on my way there, I was just so lacking in energy. I was still pretty groggy from this morning. Um, haven't perked up that much at all. So yeah, um, this is where we're camping tonight. Pretty wonderful. Pretty glorious. Got some little fishies in the water too over there. I don't know what they are. They're only small. The amount of times I see that chopper flying around and they were hovering just out above that ridge up there. My best guess is they're taking a good look at Ben Nevis there. If someone's taking a CMD, they get in a bit of trouble trying to go up Ben Nevis. So that, that would be my best guess. Uh, back in the tent. Uh, it's only quarter past nine. I'm knackered out. Uh, uh, this chest is still pretty affected, and then uh, I'm just feeling groggy. Feel like shit. Uh, I ain't got no energy. And we got a long walk back into town tomorrow. Uh, so, the plan is I'm going to be going to sleep soon. Super tired. And tomorrow get up, finish the video that we've been doing today, go past uh, Glen Nevis campsite, they have, use their Wi-Fi, upload that video, and then head on down to uh, the spa, there's a spa just a bit further down, grab some supplies, grab a, grab a co coffee, they got a cost machine there, so I'll be using that, and then I'll probably be going back to that Dundeerdale uh, campsite, camp area well it's not a campsite but it's where I, I've camped a couple of times now because I like it there it's all right so um head back there and then just chill out for the rest of the day hopefully recover get rid of 
all this uh, grogginess and this chest infection and whatever. But no, that's the plan. And the snake's splashing around in the river out there. I don't know what it is. Hopefully, hope those cows don't come over here. No, I think they do. The sun has risen over the mountains. Today, we're off to the campsite, recharge, upload, uh, resupply, and then tomorrow, we're back at it again. So I'm gonna finish up my coffee and I'll catch you guys in a minute. Mm. Just finished up filming uh, the Solinio 45 litre pack review. That was sometimes annoying. So this pack has been on go again I must have seen them every other day since I've been out here seen them a lot especially around Ben Nevis so <coughs> <coughs> oh chest so that's the last time we're going through that whole routine for a little while we're setting up the tent the roll mat the sleeping bag and pack it all away doing it again pack it away do it again pack it away do it again the last time we're going to collect some water for a little while. Obviously not forever. But uh, for now, it's our last evening here in Lokaba. A little bummed out about it. The whole place is beautiful. People, lovely. Uh, I, wouldn't I wouldn't have changed a thing about the entire trip the good the bad the ugly because even well, even the bad times it, it made it the adventure that it's been so yeah we're not change it wouldn't change the thing about it but I've come down with something got a real bad chest infection I'm feeling all groggy still I got a little bit of a bum knee I'm gonna get home see my baby that's what I'm gonna do I gotta get home see my baby but I'll be back. For sure, I'll be back. Maybe we'll come up here during the winter. And do some, uh, have some fun in the old, uh, in the winter around here. Do some extreme stuff, huh? Top of mountains. For sure, I'll be back in the spring. 100%. We'll spend a good while out here in the spring. Well, before we leave here, I just want to say goodbye to a couple of friends. We've become quite close friends, actually. You got Tick and you got Tok. It's just like TikTok. They're annoying as shit. Let's see if this pizza little bastard's out. It will do us. The gas stove broke. So we plugged in full bottle of gas. The first one was shit. And the second one was shit. Had major electronic problems today. 
My feet are killing me. The bottom of my feet are on fire. My boots are wet. There's no point in changing the socks because the socks are still going to get wet. Uh, I hate to gross you out, guys. But look, at, look at it. Prune. It's not good, guys. It's not good at all. Heading down this winding road to Fort William now. It's raining. And here comes the rain. Raining again. Now I'm getting in the tent. Looks like that is us confined to the tent. Ben Nellis found him when his head in the clouds. At least today, we are now in the clouds. This is the beginning of the rest of your life. Is it a bad deal? Oh, man. Yeah, this is just... The compass is going a little bit. I can't turn back, and I can't go down. Oh! Three of them. So far. Ouch. Wrong That's the sweater guy. Too gone. It's so much nicer doing it with these tweezers than. The Lebanon putting out my hair. Free gone. Good luck. It feels I'm itching. Is that another one? Look at that. Caked. Do you have to keep doing that, bro? Yeah, I do have to keep doing it. Because if I don't do it, then I'll die. We all know it's a joke. No, you get Lyme disease from it. Is that another one? Ouch! Back's sake. Ouch! Back, in the backwards. Uh, as you saw in the video, Near the end of the trip there, I started to get a little unwell and I also started to develop some pretty painful knee pain uh, pretty quickly. So what I thought was just generic cold through traveling, public transport, mixing with the public and all those germs, right? And knee pain from probably just 15 days of almost walking every single day with a pack on my back over in some cases some pretty harsh terrain so I'm thinking hey it's just a generic cold just generic knee pain because I didn't knowingly become aware of any knee injury I didn't nothing happened while on a trail but it turns out that generic cold and that generic knee pain was actually Lyme disease and Lyme arthritis in my knee over 15 ticks I removed from my body and uh, I got a tick the day before we went on a trip multiple multiple ticks while I was on a trip and somehow I don't know how I thought I'd check myself over pretty thoroughly uh, but four ticks managed to cross south of the border with me the funny thing is before this I've never knowingly had a tick bite this year my sons had a tick bite my partners had a tick bite and I've had several tick bites so they they are out in force this year so I can handle cold and flu symptoms but the pain that is developed from when I bend my knee when I'm walking, something else. Um, I'm pretty much dragging my left leg behind me because I'm trying to keep it straight the entire time. It's okay if it's straight, 
So I'm walking with a straight leg, just dragging it behind me. So that's where we're at, that's where we're up to. I've uh, gone and done a blood test, I'm on the antibiotics now, and uh, yeah, stop us, it will not.